dear student in this video we will discuss about the uv visible spectroscopy so first we will start with the introduction then uh, lambert's bs law instrumentation electronic transitions and some specific terms which used in uv visible spectroscopy and the application of this spectroscopy so spectroscopy it is a branch of science that deals with the interaction of the electromagnetic radiations with the metals here electromagnetic radiations flow with the uh, uh, photons particles so uh, which carry the energy equals to sc upon uh, lambda and these radiations have the Uh, absorb at different wavelength so we will start with the uv visible spectroscopy here near uv region which is uh, 200 to 400 nanometer and this region mainly used for the transitions electronic transition in the molecule and far uv region for the below 200 nanometer and it's a uh, uh, vacuum Uh, we call that and visible range between 400 to 800 nanometer which we can see from the our naked eye and uh, mainly the solvent which we used in the uh, this spectroscopy ethyl alcohol hexane and water these solvent uh, does not uh, absorb the light in uv regions so these are good solvent for this and this spectroscopy is the complementary to the fluorescence spectroscopy in the instrumentation here this is the double beam spectrophotometer and here you will see this open part here we place the cubits of the glass tubes one for the reference as a solvent and another with the solvent uh, compound dissolved in the solvent and then we close this uh, box and then we start with the uh, this uh, one program is there in this uh, screen and then uh, after the correction we will see the spectra over here which we can see the lambda max in that so how uh, this is the schematic diagram here is the light source Uh, and then its uh, prism is there. Then these are the slits, and uh, one cubit which I told you one with the sample, and another will be the reference only the solvent. And these are the photo cells P one P two, and then it will give the uh, here uh, spectrum. So light source for the UV light, we can use uh, different uh, uh, light source like hydrogen discharge lamp, deuterium gas discharge lamp, quartz, and mercury. And for the visible uh, uh, tungsten filament, in for the sample cell, we use the quartz cubit, especially for the UV spectroscopy, which is made up of the quartz. And glass cubit also can use only this is. Uh, for the visible spectroscopy and detect uh, photo multiplier cell photovoltaic cell and photo multiplier tubes here uh, the, uh, what detector do it will convert the light energy into the electrical energy or the current so output current is proportional to the intensity of the light jitna jyada intensity hoga utka output current utna hi jyada hoga so as per the lambert's law when monochromatic light is passed through the solution the rate of decrease in intensity is directly proportional to the path length of the solution on integration we got that log i0 i2 equals to k for the bs law when monochromatic light is passed through a solution for a fixedness of solution the rate of decrease in intensity is directly proportional to the concentration of solution and it's uh, log i0 i2 equals to k c as per the uh, bs lambert's law it's a combination of bs and lambert's law it is a linear relationship the absorbance of a light by the solution is directly proportional to the concentration of the solution and the path length and epsilon is the molar absorptive coefficient absorbance equals to 
log i0 upon it and the percentage transmittance equals to percentage t it up i0 so transmittance is the reverse of the absorbance so what will be the principle uh, principle is uh, it should follow the bs lambda's law and there is a certain wavelength which is absorbed the lambda max which is selected to analyze the sample in the spectrophotometer so uh, it will uh, give the uh, uh, give the plot between the absorbance and the wavelength this will be the lambda max where we can see the maximum absorbance here so absorption of the lambda max from the uv visible uv visible region of the bonding electrons in a covalent bond to the higher anti bonding molecular orbital stronger covalent bond higher energy required for the excitation and it will uh, give the short lambda in the uv region weaker covalent bond lower energy requirement and longer lambda in the visible region. For the electronic transition molecules contain the pi electrons or the non bonded electron they will absorb the uv visible light and they get excited in the uh, higher energy state and these transition consist of electron pi electrons pi electrons will uh, and the n electrons and the anti uh, n electrons to the anti bonding orbital these three types of electrons sigma electrons which are present in the saturated or uh, we call that sigma bond an electron does not participate in the bond so these will be the lone pair of electron which is present on the nitrogen oxygen sulfur atoms and pi electron which are involved in the unsaturated compounds like alkene alkyne and the aromatics benzene based compounds Uh, for the types of electronic uh, transition these are uh, mainly uh, six type of electron transition but uh, the, uh, theoretically it's a six type of transition but experimentally we observe that four type of mainly electronic transition sigma to sigma star and to sigma star pi to pi star and to um, pi star the sigma to sigma star bonding as orbital electron excited to the corresponding anti bonding energy required is high so example is the methane methane contain sigma to sigma star transition or absorbance at 125 nanometer n to sigma star transition n means heteroatom will be present in the molecule sigma n single bond containing so saturated compounds with the lone pair like oxygen nitrogen sulfide and the uh, this transition will give the less energy than the sigma to sigma star transition and wavelength will be the 150 to 250 and functional group will be the amines or alkyl pi to pi star transition pi it means double bond containing compounds unsaturated compounds so uh, this type of transition will uh, present in the unsaturated alkene alkyne and the carbonyl compounds and nitriles and these uh, transition will gives the three bands e k and p bands so e band will present in the alkenes and it will absorb between the 160 to 175 nanometer e 160 to 175 k band will present in the conjugated double bond like butadiene acetyl oxide so range will be 200 to 280 b band aromatics and heteroaromatic compounds So 220 to 270, and absorptivity will be between the 1000 to 10000 for the pipe. And the pi star transition, n for uns, uh, a non-bonding atom will be present, and the double bond. So uh, these uh, transitions are very weak bands, and absorptive coefficient will be 10 to 100, and these will give the R bands 270 to 320. type of transition present in the aldehydes and ketones this is the energy sequence energy so uh, lower is the uh, sigma and higher highest will be the uh, sigma star in between pi and then pi star and the middle one is the non bonding electron so as per uh, the transition we can see sigma to sigma sigma star it will give the highest energy 
we need more energy for this and lambda will be shorter for this so these will be lambda will be shorter pi to pi star then n to uh, sigma star and then n to pi star so this is the energy sequence from sigma to sigma star sigma to sigma to sigma star n to sigma star pi to pi star n to pi star uh, from this n to pi star and pi to sigma star these are the forbidden transitions these uh, transition uh, uh, these transitions um, observed in the only uh, the above 200 nanometers and this is for the um, vacuum and these are the theoretical transitions so these are some terms which used in the uv visible spectroscopy chromophore oxochromes and the cells so chromophore these are the uh, part of a molecule which is responsible for its color of the molecules and these absorb in the uh, more than 200 nanometer which are covalently unsaturated groups like uh, carbon carbon double bond carbon oxygen uh, carbonyls nitriles nitro and in oxochrome these are the oxo means to increase the intensity so uh, saturated compounds with the non bonded electron which contains the lone pair of electrons so when these are attached to the chromophore they will increase the wavelength and intensity of the absorption when we Lambda max 225 nanometer in phenols. Lambda will be 26 and uh, 270 in phenol and toluene it's the 269. So also come in both of them. Uh, phenol and toluene are the uh, CS3 in toluene and OH in the phenol. Methochromic shift or red shift. The shift of an absorption maxima to a longer wavelength. It is due to the presence of an oxochrome. Uh, para nitrophenol, when we dissolve in the alkaline medium, it will be para nitrophenoxide ion and lambda will goes to the 255 to 265 nanometer. In hypsochromic shift, it's a blue shift. The shift of an absorption to a shorter wavelength it is due to the removal of the conjugation or the change in the polarity of the solvent example is the aniline aniline when uh, dissolved in acidic medium it will add aluminium ion so lambda is going to 82 to 65 hyperchromic shift when absorption intensity is increased when oxochrome is introduced like cs3 in pyridine when we increase then the intensity will be increased to 750 to 3563 hypochromic shift when the absorption intensity of a compound is decreased uh, this example like okay, naphthalene and 2 methyl naphthalene when we introduce methyl group then its geometry will be the stop and this E max will be changed 19,000 to 10,250 so it's a prominent shift we can observe in this 2 uh, methyl uh, naphthalene this uh, graph between absorption and lambda, we will, if we are saying like okay, red shift, then it lambda will go here, and by the just opposite hip so, and uh, intensity is increasing, then hypertrophic, and intensity is decreasing, hypertrophic. So this is the summary: uh, shifting to longer hypochromic, shifting to shorter hypsochromic. Uh, increase in uh, intensity hyperchromic and decrease hypochromic. So application of UV visible spectroscopy, we can analyze, uh, we can do the quantitative analysis and the qualitative analysis also. So uh, and we can detect the impurities in the organic compounds and detect the isomer cis or trans both will give different lambda by that we can identify them so determination of the molecular weight by the bs 
and determination of the structure of the several vitamin and we can study the kinetics of the chemical reaction so thank you for uh, watching this uh, video subscribe the channel dr mamta chahar and like the video uh, by clicking the uh, like button